Kevin McCarthy moments after being ousted as Speaker of the House. A stunning rebuke, becoming the first Speaker to be removed in U.S. history. The Office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. The vote to vacate was called by Matt Gates from the far right of McCarthy's own Republican conference, who's been called the shadow speaker, a hardline MAGA conservative who's been holding McCarthy hostage since January. Kevin McCarthy couldn't keep his word. He made an agreement in January regarding the way Washington would work, and he violated that agreement. An agreement with the far-right MAGA Republicans that came with an insurance policy. In the form of a rule change, any individual member would be able to call a vote at any time to vacate the speakership. McCarthy sealed his own fate from day one. It all came to a head over the weekend when McCarthy failed to give MAGA Republicans what they wanted, a government shutdown. McCarthy instead partnered with Democrats to fund the government, enraging the MAGA right who hoped to use a shutdown to force big spending cuts. Democrats want to own Kevin McCarthy. They can have it. The next morning, McCarthy seemed oblivious to the obvious threat in front of him. He says he's coming for you. Can you survive? Yes, I'll survive. You know, this is personal with Matt. Two days later, he was ousted as Speaker. Eight Republicans joined by all of the Democrats, who said they had no reason to save him. We're supposed to celebrate because he did the right thing one time this weekend and kept the government open. He's been a, a disastrous Speaker. We don't trust him. His own conference doesn't trust him. Uh, he doesn't seem to stand for anything. The eight Republicans to vote against McCarthy did so for various reasons, but all had lost faith in his ability to lead. We need a Speaker who will fight for something, anything, besides just staying or becoming Speaker. He is a favorite with the special interest groups. Every legislature across the country is able to complete their work and pass a balanced budget in the appropriate time. And so I say that this was an engineered crisis of Kevin McCarthy's doing. People in my district that I represent want to see stronger leadership. They don't think he's a great leader. His leadership has caused more problems. The remaining two Republicans had deeply personal reasons for voting to oust McCarthy that a competent leader would have never let happen. As a survivor of rape and I worked all year on a rape kit bill that hasn't seen the time of day, I cannot tell you how frustrating that is as a woman in this conference. If you make a promise, you should keep it. And if you promise women you're going to help them, then you damn well better do it. Currently praying about it. The morning of the vote, Congressman Tim Burchett told CNN he still hadn't made up his mind and was praying on it. After the interview, he says McCarthy mocked him for the prayer comments. Someone mocks me like that and mocks my religion. It's not the quality or the character of person that I want as Speaker of the United States. Who is to blame for McCarthy's failure in leadership? Is it those eight Republicans who voted against him? They're traitors. All eight of them should, in fact, be primaried. They should all be driven out of public life. Or perhaps just Matt Gates for leading a nine-month rebellion, undercutting him at every turn. Kevin McCarthy is a feature of the swamp. McCarthy could show true leadership and take personal responsibility. Furious Let's hear what he thinks went wrong. I think today was a political decision by the Democrats. I oh, think, that's what you got out I of think? that? Okay. Well, even more disappointing than McCarthy's inability to set ego aside to self-reflect is his unwillingness to take any accountability for his role in failing as leader. The first House Speaker in American history to be voted out of that leadership position takes no blame. Nothing he would have done differently. No learning lessons. Instead, as his final act, he's decided to kick Nancy Pelosi out of her office in the Capitol. She currently occupies the office reserved for former speakers. Well, that's Kevin McCarthy now. Technically, the house and recess it was the first order of business for the interim speaker, a close McCarthy ally. Diane. Pelosi got word of her office Diane. eviction while delivering the eulogy to Senator Dianne Feinstein out in San Francisco, given 24 hours to vacate the office. Still no new speaker, no progress made on the Republican side, and this is their most important order of business, office space. As Kevin McCarthy wanders the halls of the Capitol, looking for new places to lay blame and old offices to feng shui, I hope he finds a mirror and pulls up the lyrics to Taylor Swift's anti-hero. Me, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. Kevin, you're not the first speaker to try to lead a raucous house that doesn't agree on anything. You are the first who failed. And I know introspection can be difficult, coming up with takeaways and lessons learned. Gosh, math was hard for you. One plus two equals Kevin still doesn't have the votes. So we'll spell this one out for you. Power does not lie in the office. Not in the Speaker's office, not in Nancy Pelosi's current office. Power lies with the person holding the office, only if they know how to use it.